Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Just 30 minutes ago I analyzed the financial bill. Eugene Wamalwa Shoka is here with us at Citizen TV which for those who have watched Eugene Wamalwa is saying that William Ruto expended much on his US trip by using private jet and also it was a kind of commercial flight to pay a visit to United States of America again Eugene Wamalo have talked about taxing Kenyans on bread and other things he also said that Ruto is spending taxes on a various luxurious thing as a president Furthermore, he has said that William Ruto, they have worked together with William Ruto, sorry, as a cabinet secretary. And when they were checking on other president, presidential uh, traveling trip, most of them were not spending as Ruto is now doing. That is Eugene Wamalwa is saying. As if that is not enough, Miguna Miguna Street is also attacking Ruto, uh, 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 William Ruto on its US visitation and is saying that this is very wrong and Kenyans are now suffering on even hardly making meals in their life. So Eugene Wamalwa is now saying that he might end up making Kenyans to make their own decision and calling for protest and saying enough is enough to this anarchy happening in the country. In this video, Jeff is asking Eugene Wamalwa what next on his political observation if this is still being carried on in the country. Let's take a look and listen to them on their political observation. Using taxes in 2023 and now in the finance bill 2024, the church has also been on the front line in saying no to these high taxes, the punitive taxes of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Yeah. That's what the opposition is saying, punitive taxes. Joining me live in the studio now is Azmiyo co-principal Eugene Wamawa. Before we get to the Finance Bill 2024, Moishimiwa, <coughs> the police officers to Haiti. Yes. It's been opposed back and forth, forth and back, mm. but the government is insisting the police officers are going. It is unconstitutional, Jeff, and uh, we want to tell the president he's not above the constitution, and we had him say in Washington it is his decision. It is not. Any decision to deploy must be approved by parliament, must be within our constitution. And if there wasn't a parliament in Haiti, there wasn't a cabinet in Haiti, and the necessary structures to approve, then whatever they signed with Ariel, and, and it never even landed home. You remember, the fellow came to Nairobi, the people of Haiti told him, don't come back, stay away with that. If that is the basis of the deployment, it is unconstitutional. It has been raised in court. The court has made a founding on it, and it is unconstitutional. Yet, he's going against a court ruling. And in your words, Haiti might become Maiti. Eventually, when uh, this happens, and uh, Ruto forces his way because of American dollars or other considerations, and uh, Kenyan children are put in harm's way, and Haiti turns to Maiti, he will be held responsible, especially if it was done unconstitutionally he will uh, he will answer to it to kenyans yeah the other thing is the trip to the u.s yes private jet 200 million dollars or 200 jeff. million shillings jeff it is ridiculous it's preaching water and drinking wine because you can you cannot say we don't have money to pay for this we don't have money to do this then the taxes that you keep rising raising every day from poor kenyans you, you, are, you, you are spending these taxes in a, in a very luxurious way. The wastage that is there. 
You cannot do that. Other presidents before him have taken commercial flights. I was a minister with uh, Dr. William Ruto in Kibaki's government. Mm. Kibaki used to take commercial flights. I was also a minister with him in the cabinet of Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta used to take commercial flights. So what is so special about William Ruto that he must he hire such an expensive jet all the way from Dubai, it flies and then flies. In fact, what Uhuru would do, he would fly to Dubai with a Fokker uh, jet, mm -hmm. then board uh, a commercial flight from Dubai to the US. Here is a hustler who is saying, uh, we are doing very badly, we don't have the money, but he would wait for the jet to come for him from Dubai to Nairobi and fly him. Why didn't he fly with his uh, aircraft that is paid for by Kenyans to Dubai then connect from there. You would have saved some costs. So we are saying it is something that cannot be justified. It is also a way of the president failing to market Kenya ways. This is the pride of Africa. It should be the pride of Kenya. Call even churches uh, uh, William Ruto to sit down with Kenyans, listen to Kenyans, and allow Kenyans to express their feelings in order not to distract his political ambition or dream based to his agenda. But Clergy's efforts bear no fruit and now we are seeing things are now worsening. And according to Eugene Omala, is also issuing little warning if this deal or if, if this plan is still carried on in the country. Welcome to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. It is still Zion Kenya TV, and I want to take this golden chance to thank you so much for your great support to this channel. I want to thank the new subscribers who tuned in and subscribe to our channel. I want to say thank you, and may God bless you. And a quick reminder, please consider to like this video and drop your opinion at the comment section below. Meanwhile, let's proceed and pick some of two to three points here. <laughs> Sorry, now, Eugene Wamalwa, on the other side, uh, talked about even the Nadiko report, which they struggle and uh, discuss at the bombers. But at long last, Opio and I and the group who went to State House, they were not in good term with President Ruto. Ailo Dinga himself stayed behind, quiet himself, uh, made, made, made himself silent, and never come out and talk about the narco report. So it means there is tax impunity being implemented to the people in the country, which Eugene Wamalwa is now disclosing and saying this is not the good way there are all the right things to be done to the people in the Republic. He have discontracted Ruto on heavy taxation, heavy taxation is doing in the country, and admits to the rejection of financial bill, which I said yesterday, just 30 minutes, sorry, ago. So, what is it which should be done for us to avoid these political wrangles? this political disagreement in our country. Number one, William Ruto must sit down with both, both opposition and his team in the government. When he sits down with the opposition, he must come out in conclusion and tell Kenyans his next move on, tax, on taxation. He must also be clear that is, is he going to tax Kenyans on bread? Is he going to tax Kenyans on internet, which I said? Is he going to tax Kenyans on fuel again? Is he going to tax Kenyans on uh, other things which Kenyans normally used? Which is good. Then, after taxation, how are they going to spend this money? Are they going to use it to utilize our economy crisis? Or are they just going to squander this money 
to pay their luxurious jet which they used, uh, which cost 200 million per hour. I heard some people say that the United States of America had paid it. I'm not very much aware of it, but our country is having several people who spend some hours on social media platform, which is good. So many Kenyans are hardly asking, uh, are hardly making their food or means meal on the table. So Eugene Wamalwa is now pleading, pleading with President Ruto that if he want respect Kenyans, uh, Kenyans need, then they are going to say enough is enough and call for mass protest. That is also a little bit challenge because a country with demonstration is a country which is dwarf on development. People are going to lose their life. Many Kenyans are going to suffer. We are going to starve if we don't come into agreement and solve this whole dispute happening in the country. So it is very good and let's avoid calling ourselves pride of Africa but to call ourselves pride of Kenya which is very good. So these people also are planning to send President Ruto home 2027. Some people are saying that if they want to finish Ruto, let Gadi Gashagwa try 2027, Mount Kenya will vote him and other tribe will follow. As simple as that. I don't think if it is going to be easier, because Ruto is also a tactful man who knows how to calculate his political move and is very much aware of anything people are saying. He just pretend, but he knows whatever he's doing. What I want to say as I conclude is that let's always find time to solve problem affecting our country first because the same Kenyans we are mistreating are the ones who will again come and vote us in in the next election. So if we increase taxes on sugar, taxes on fuel, taxes on bread, it won't bear us any fruit, but it is just going to bring political dispute, political wrangles, and Kenyans are going to be annoyed and they are going to form another base or how they will check you and on how they will handle you when it's come to next election. I think Eugene Wamalwa is very right. He's not discriminating the government, but he's giving word of wisdom to President Ruto. This marks the end of our analysis, ladies and gentlemen. What can you say on this Eugene Wamalwa's shocker? Bye-bye, as you have to meet on another political discussion.